In this question, we're asked to consider a 0.2 kilogram puck upon a frictionless ice surface, and it's being acted on by the forces shown in the diagram. So we've got two cases here, and we're asked to, in each case to find the resulting accelerations. So we're going to use the problem solving strategy idea. We've got to first interpret the problem, develop it, evaluate it, and assess it. So let's look at part A. Here we've got a force uh, with a magnitude of 4 newtons acting to the right on this puck, and the force is acting horizontally. So this diagram here is a physical picture, but in developing this problem what I want to do is introduce the concept of a free body diagram. That's where we pl replace the physical object that the forces are acting upon by a single point. That object has a mass of 0.2 kilograms, so it's important to write down all the information that we know uh, about the problem, the things that we get from the, the written words, and we can attach to that free body diagram uh, a force and that has uh, a length uh, which is 4 newtons, or a magnitude of 4 newtons. Because we're asked to find uh, the acceleration, this is ultimately a problem with regards to Newton's second law. So in developing this problem, I realise I have to remember Newton's second law. <coughs> Newton's second law tells me that the acceleration that an object acquires is dependent upon the net force acting on that object uh, divided by the mass of the object. You may be more familiar with the equation rewritten as F equals MA, but what's important to realize is that when you think about the force equaling mass times acceleration, that force is the net forces acting on the object. In this case, we've only got one force horizontally acting to the right on the object, so if we want to consider just the horizontal motion, we only have to consider that one force. And that's not to say there aren't other forces acting on the object. There are two other forces uh, acting in the vertical direction. We have the weight of the object mg acting downwards and we have the normal force from the ice acting upwards. Of course because there's no acceleration in the vertical direction we don't expect the ice puck to levitate uh, upwards uh, so that means the magnitude of the normal force and the magnitude of the weight force must be uh, equal. So all that's going to happen here is that we're going to get some acceleration in the horizontal direction. So let's go back to this equation here in the evaluate stage and let's see if we can choose um, which one's going to give me the acceleration. So they're the same equation but in this form on the left um, we already have acceleration as the subject so if you recalled uh, F net equals MA what you might do is rearrange this equation into this form here first to get that acceleration as a subject before you put the numbers in. Now the other thing to remember is that <coughs> these equations are actually vector equations. I should say that my force is a vector and my acceleration is a vector. Uh, so <coughs> to solve this, what we want to do is turn this firstly into an algebraic equation. And the way that we do that um, is to identify a coordinate system. And so this coordinate system is something we have f are free to choose. So I'm going to choose that the force acts in the, x, the positive x direction um, going to the right. What that means is that my force, my net force, now is just plus 4 newtons, okay? Because the force is in the same direction as the positive x direction, so it's a positive number. Uh, the mass, of course, is not a vector quantity, it's a scalar quantity, so we can just put that in as 0 0.2 uh, kilograms. And then if I divide those two numbers, 4 divided by 0.2 is the same as 4 multiplied by 5. That gives me 20. Now, newtons per kilogram is actually equal to meters per second squared. It should be my acceleration. Uh, now, of course, the assessing part of uh, my idea problem-solving strategy is to just check the, this. Uh, so there are a few things we can check. One, of course, is the units check. So newtons per kilogram, how do I know that's equal to meters per second squared? Well, I recall that one newton is the force required to accelerate one kilogram at one meter per second squared. And so the kilograms cancel out, leaving me meters per second squared. So unitly, it's a correct. Secondly, um, I notice that uh, the acceleration should be in the same direction as, as the net force. And so since I chose my force to be in the positive x direction, I expect my acceleration to also be in the positive x direction, so it should be a positive number. So that's correct as well. So let's now turn our attention to part B. We want to find the acceleration resulting from the forces acting on the puck that are shown. So now we've got two forces. So once again, let's start off by drawing a free body diagram. So this point represents my puck. And I've got two forces acting. Well, I want to label all the forces which are acting on the diagram. So F2 acts to the left. Uh, it's got a 
force of, of 2 newtons, so a magnitude of 2 newtons. So F3 acts down at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, so that's this angle in here, this 30 degrees. It has a magnitude of 1 newton. And there are other forces which are acting as well. So we also have the, remember the weight force acting downwards, so that's mg. And we also have the normal force acting upwards. Now in this case, the normal force is actually going to be greater than mg because there's no acceleration in the vertical direction. So the net force in the vertical direction must be zero. And force acting downwards is going to be mg plus this component of the 1 Newton force acting downwards. So the sum of these two here are the same magnitude as my normal force. Uh, what I've done here is I've actually resolved uh, the 1 Newton force acting downwards at 30 degrees into two components. So what I've drawn here is the vertical component um, of that 1 Newton force. Uh, I also have to have a horizontal component of the 1 Newton force. So if you know about vector addition, then uh, this vector here plus this vector here must be equal to the 1 Newton force because it's a head to tail addition. So I've got no acceleration in the, in the y direction which I'm going to call plus y as being up, and all I want to consider is what acceleration I'm going to have in the plus x directions. That's finding, uh, that's choosing my coordinate system. So once again, I can recall uh, Newton's second law, uh, F net is equal to ma. Remembering that net force is the sum of the forces, that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. And I want to consider uh, just the forces in the x direction here. So what forces have I got? Um, I've got my 2 Newton force. Um, that's actually in the uh, negative x direction, so I have a minus 2 here. And then I've got this force here acting to the right. Uh, so how do I find the magnitude of that force? Well, I'll have to know a little bit of trigonometry. Um, and uh, what you might realize is that the magnitude of that force is equal to the magnitude of the hypotenuse, which is 1 multiplied by the cosine of the angle, which is 30 degrees. So the other force that I'm adding here uh, is going to be plus 1 times cosine of 30 degrees, and cosine of 30 degrees is actually root 3 on 2. Now you can work that out from either using a calculator, or what you might remember is that for a 30-60 triangle here, I have 1, I have 2, and I have the square root of 3 of the, my three sides. So that's the sum of the forces. Once again, the negative sign occurs because the 2 Newton force is acting to the left, so it's in the minus x direction. This is positive sign comes about because uh, the component of the 1 Newton force acts across to the right, in the positive direction. That's the sum of my two forces, and it's a, we're returning uh, those plus and minus signs turn my vector equation into a, a scalar equation. That has to be equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration. Okay, and the acceleration here is just a, a scalar quantity. We don't have to put a sign in for that. Okay, in fact, what will happen is that the sign drops out automatically. If the left-hand side of this expression is a negative number, then my acceleration must be to the left. If it's a positive number, my acceleration is to the right. So I'm going to rearrange that equation as the acceleration is equal to minus 2 plus root 3 on 2 divided by the mass, and we know the mass is equal to 0.2 kilograms. If I put those uh, numbers in, we end up uh, with uh, minus uh, 5.7 uh, meters per second squared is the acceleration. So that tells me that my acceleration is to the left, it's in the minus x direction. And uh, that kind of makes sense because uh, the f component of the 1 Newton force acting to the right here must be smaller than 2 Newtons.